Hey, what's going on, guys? This is your boy, on the side. Tan Tigers one the Bengal Dragon. Make sure to hit that like, uh, like button, that subscribe button, follow me on Twitter, Tan Tigers one hit that bell notification button. Sorry for the delay, but um, it's extremely, extremely tired yesterday. So, welcome to my thoughts on the England versus New Zealand match. I'm sorry to say this, buddy, but too little. No, no, sorry, not too little, too late. Um, that was a Sri Lanka match. I'm sorry to say this, but <laughs> well, first of all, uh, my commiserations to Pakistan because England. Uh, won this match where they needed to lose in order for Pakistan having a chance to qualify. And see, he, here's what pisses me off even more. Had England won and then had Bangladesh beat India and then had Bangladesh beat... Uh, it w if Bangladesh beat Pakistan, if Bangladesh beats Pakistan tomorrow, I think we would actually edge past New Zealand, New Zealand uh, in the run rate. But anyways... Regardless of uh, what people predicted, it's going to happen that India, Australia, England, and New Zealand are the four teams that are pretty much are going to go through. Okay, uh, but as for this match, um, I believe they dropped Ish Saudi and they, they brought in Tim Saudi. I don't think that worked out that well. But Bairstow came back into form because this was, this was a must-win match for England. When England's backs are against the wall... They will deliver. They sh they essentially made chomps out of out of uh, the Indian middle order. Okay, Bearstone and whatnot. Like you know, yeah, you're not gonna get everyone firing on every day, but uh, especially Johnny Bearstow, he actually uh, uh, batted pretty well. They had a pretty good partnership right up top, but unfortunately, it sort of. Uh, uh, fell off towards the end. Well, um, my well, as for New Zealand fielding, they were actually they're actually pretty good. But th I still saw way t like I still saw way too many short and wide deliveries. I I don't know. You know what? To an extent, I'm a bit ra I'm a bit there with Shoy Bakhtar when he says that that. The the 90s uh, era of cricket is gone, where like you know, pace bowling especially was a bit more uh, like skillful. Yeah, I agree with him. I agree with him. And he said that like you know nowadays, uh, 145 kilometer per hour bowler is cause is causing headlines all around the world. And back in and he said, uh, back in my day, you you had a good handful of bowlers, maybe two handful handful hands full of bowlers, who used to hit the 150 mark, like you know, pretty consistently. So yeah, hopefully this tournament can revive the art of you know fast fast pace bowling, instead of fast medium pace bowling. Um, but yeah, uh, New Zealand's bowling was, was not that good. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Now I remember. They sat out Lockie Ferguson. Maybe also another reason why the bowling was not that good. But Lockie Ferguson has this uh, habit of being, you know, a bit expensive as it is. But he takes wickets in the middle. So you still can't, l you still can't let go of him. Because you, you miss out on Lockie Ferguson, see what happens. Okay, now. When it comes to the New Zealand batting, I would have to say this: Kane Williamson unfortunately got out. Okay, but other than that, pretty much, I believe there was another run out as well. Other than that, pretty much everyone else failed. Martin Guptal, uh, you know, M Martin Guptal. I don't know what went on with him in this tournament. I really don't know why they're actually playing him. In fact, remove him. Move the number three to number two, and like you know, so on and so forth. Because here's the thing: if you're number three batsman, you should be you should be ready to you should be ready to open the batting. You should be ready to open the batting because if a ball, if a wicket falls the very first delivery, what's the number three batsman gonna do? He's gonna come in and assume the position of an opener because he just came one ball down. So, 
a number three should always be ready to open for the team. So move up Kane Williamson. Okay, get rid of Martin Guptill. Move up Kane Williamson and then play your Lockie Ferguson and your Ish Sodi on the side. So you have a strong spin attack and a strong pace attack as well. And speaking of spin, I w there's even a, perhaps something wrong with the captaincy because M Mitch Sadner and they're trying to do this a lot right now with Jason Roy and Joe Rudin Joe and whatnot and with the opening. They're trying to open with the spinner a lot j as you know, you know, right after Imran Tahir, like, you know, got some success with it. Uh, success with it. And they thought, you know, they, do they really think it's not going to, you know, they're not going to have a countermeasure to that, England. That, you know, opening, you know, faith, Jason Roy f uh, facing a spinner. Yeah, they are going to counter that because every team is, every team is starting to try it. So, of course, they're going to counter that. Okay, but. Back to New Zealand's batting. Um, another thing also happened. The deteriorating pitch. Okay. The deteriorating pitch. We saw this in a few matches. We saw this in the match against Bangladesh. India versus Bangladesh. Where India took advantage of the deteriorating pitch. Listen. Listen. In hindsight... Anyone will say Bangladesh played very well because despite playing on a deteriorating pitch, Bangladesh put up a very good fight. My problem was as a Bangladesh cricket fan, I was pissed off because I, was, I am still sick and tired of the excuses why Bangladesh lose. I'm sick and tired of the excuses. It's always something or the other. No, uh, lose, I mean lose crucial, crucial big matches. So, but for Bangladesh cricket, it's, it's about time that they step up. That they step up and start to fight those conditions and start overcoming those conditions. Like, the entire team has to do that together. Okay, but we saw those change of pace bo bowling, we saw the cutters, and we saw a collapse of... New Zealand batters. Tom Latham, I think he tried a little bit, but other than that, when people like Ross Taylor start to fail, Kane Williamson got uh, rock, uh, run out unluckily. Uh, uh, Tom Latham couldn't do too much. Jimmy Nisho, I guess he tried. Um, then uh, Henry Nichols, I will say, he got a bit unlucky because had he reviewed that decision, he would have been given not out because the ball was clearly on, uh, you know, missing the stumps. And here's another thing about the ICC. I'm sorry, ICC. You have to, you have to start penalizing your umpires. If they m keep making such reviewable decisions, remember the decision review system (DRS) is there as a backup in case the occasional instance that the decision is wrong. This is why ODI Cricket now has only one DRS decision per person. Only one. But if your umpires get complacent, I'm sorry ICC, you have to penalize your umpires. Okay. But overall, this was you know, pretty much a clinical, a dominating performance by England with the ball. New Zealand could not even score 200 runs. They lost the match by over 100 runs. Uh, uh, England scored just a takeover 300 and New Zealand could not even score 200 runs. So, New Zealand, they make it through even if Pakistan win tomorrow by the skin of their teeth because it, it goes down to run rate. But given the way that they have played, maybe they're, maybe you could say they barely deserve to make it through. I'm sorry. Because New Zealand are a team that is pro that is progressively getting worse as the team moves forward. Okay, and they made it made it through to the semifinals. So that is a, that is a little uh, disappointing to see that such a team is you know has made it to the semifinals. Oh boy, would have been much more fun if it was another South Asian team, even a Pakistan. It, it would have been much more fun. But anyways. Uh,
my summary is basically Bearstow Blast plus bad bowling. This is what cost New Zealand the match. Bearstow Blast, bad bowling, and a bit of the deteriorating pitch. Alright, that's about it, guys. Let me know what you thought about this match in the comment section below. This is your boy, Tanvir Side, the Bengal Dragon, signing out. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button.